Talking wheat planting now and soil fertility considerations for the upcoming growing season. Here's Dr. Brian Arnell. It's that time of year when the cattle producers are putting wheat in the ground for grazing, graze out, dual purpose, and our, our grain only producers are figuring out what they're planning to do for their grain only wheat crop when it comes to fertility. The problem is right now, if we look at the grain prices, grain prices aren't great and the input prices are, are still pretty high. So a lot of the questions I'm getting right now is, how do I manage my winter wheat fertility to maximize productivity, but really minimize my input and my input cost? If we look at the grazing system, the one thing I'm gonna say is, anhydrous ammonia is a cheap product right now. It's coming in at a low price. Actually, most of the nitrogen fertilizer is a fairly decent price right now. So if I'm grazing wheat for graze out or dual purpose, I wanna make sure I have at least 50 to 60 units of nitrogen down. That could be including residual to make sure I've got that nitrogen down so that I have a good fall growth if we get these fall rains like we're hoping to, so I get good fall productivity. I would make sure right now we still have time to get that last minute soil sample in, sent into your county extension office so that we know uh, pH, phosphorus, and potassium. If your pH is off, we can't really lime right now as far as we don't have the time to really get it incorporated and changed. So what we would be looking at is making sure that we're able to band or broadcast phosphorus to accommodate for any low pH spots. We also wanna make sure if we have low phosphorus that we're banding or broadcasting phosphorus. And the phosphorus right now for me is quite critical if we're looking at a grazing wheat because that phosphorus helps root exploration and early season growth. And so don't limit your plant's productivity because your pH is low or phosphorus is low. Look at your soil test results and look at OSU's recommendations to see how much to apply. We move into that, that in rate, talk a little bit more about that for our grazing wheat. I still say 50 or 60 units right now. I don't know how much fall rain we're going to have, so how much productivity we're going to have this fall. So just put that much on. If things look good and the cattle prices stay strong and everything looks good in the fall and early spring, then let's hit it a second time to try to get a little bit more growth and a little bit of uh, more productivity in that, that last bit of gain. Our grain only producers right now, it's looking really tight as far as the input cost and that grain price. So think about what we're doing. Let's make sure that we're not just doing extra. If you look at the price of anhydrous or really urea right now, it's a pretty good price compared to what the expectations are this spring. I'm going to warn folks though, all of our work that shows if you put all your nitrogen up front and pre-plant, you do not make the same yield as if you split or wait for all nitrogen in season. So let's balance that cost of having a cheap nitrogen up front and something in season. I'll say if you're able to pre-order now so that you have that, that spring nitrogen or, or late fall nitrogen, I would rather see you delay it, but I understand when nitrogen is cheap, sometimes you have to take that economics uh, evaluation into consideration. For more information on soil fertility on winter wheat, both grazing and grain only, go to the SUNUP website at okstate.sunup.edu.